Welcome back to Library 21C's introduction to 3D modeling using 1-2-3D design. Uh, and we're going to just dive right into manipulating solid objects, uh, starting with the Move and uh, Rotate tool. Now, first thing you want to know is that when you click an object, you get this bottom menu right down here with a lot of the commonly used tools uh, when you're working with solid objects, as opposed to their subparts, their faces, their edges, and, and their vertices. And among these tools are the uh, Move tool, the smart scale, and the scale tool, they're also found up here. So let's start by selecting the object, we left click on it, we hit move and rotate, and we get this dialog over here. And There's a lot going on here, so we're going to break it down. First thing we have are our arrows, and all we got to do with the arrows is just move them around, and it's going to slide our object along one axis keeping it aligned with the other ones. And this is important because, for example, here I am, I am clicking the object and I am moving my mouse up. Now, up can mean moving it up in space or just moving it further away from me like that. So having that arrow there with the Move tool is important to specify what up means in this context, and that's why we use isolated arrows. See these little white sort of window pane squares right towards the center here? This is like clicking two arrows at once. So it's going to move things along that particular plane. So you can see it's moving across the X and the uh, Z axis, but it is staying locked in terms of that Y axis, as opposed to if we do this, where it's moving along the Y and the Z axis, but not along the x-axis. And you can see also as I'm moving, see those numbers that are changing around in that gray box? Uh, anytime you move something, it's, uh, it's letting you know how far you're moving it. So you can see I'm moving it 20 millimeters along the x-axis. If you want to be precise, oh, okay, it calls it the y-axis. We'll uh, work with that. Uh, but here, if I only want to move it, you know, 15, I can type in 15 or 15.5, things like that. So if you want to be more precise, you can just start typing in the distance you want to move things into this box. In the center, you see this white dot. This uh, moves the object also along two axes, uh, but they are specified by the perspective of your camera. So if I'm looking at the workspace from this 45 degree angle right here, and I move it along with this uh, circle, you can see, whoa, let's, uh, let's change my perspective a little bit. Let's try it again. There you go. So you can see it's um, it's not locking it to any particular axis. It's moving it along all three, but the direction is defined by which way I'm looking at the object. So that white circle can be kind of useful uh, for you. I prefer to just move using the arrows and the window panes. We also have these uh, radial dials over here. You can see that the one I'm selecting uh, becomes whole. You can, you can trace around that whole circle as opposed to if I move away from it, you only see that half circle. Uh, and if you grab one of these little knobs, you're going to turn and rotate the object along that axis a certain number of degrees, which you can also type in. Now, uh, one tip here that I see a lot of people do uh, is if you go to move and rotate something and you immediately think, oh, I want to move this up by five millimeters, and you start typing a five, you could see it didn't move up uh, because you need to select which arrow or which radial dial you're inputting a number for. Otherwise, the program has to guess, and, and more likely than not, it's going to guess you're trying to move things along a, uh, a horizontal, the, the, the x distance there. Uh, so if, uh, if you want to rotate something by 30 degrees, you have to click one of these first. Even if you don't drag it, even if you just click it, you have to define that you're turning things along this axis before you type in your number. Alright, so we also have the scale tool. And what the scale tool does is it resizes your object. So here's scale. 
talk about smart scale in a second, but when you scale something, it starts out by default doing a uniform scale, meaning it's going to make everything bigger along the X, Y, and Z axis all proportionally. So your object is not going to get warped. It's going to keep its aspect ratio. And you can see with scale, you get this white arrow, and as we drag it out, the object gets bigger, and this factor number in the box here also gets bigger, letting you know basically the multiplier of the uh, of the size that you're working with so uh, if we scale and we know we want to make it exactly twice as big we're going to type in a 2 in here um, and it'll do exactly that if we know we want to make it half as big we're going to type in a 0.5 uh, so if we want to make it one tenth as big we will type in a 0.1 and so on all right now we also have uh, oh, by the way, if you want to uh, flatten something on the work grid, see how it's kind of underneath it, you can just click it and hit D. There we go. And it's going to snap it back on top of the grid. All right, let's talk about non-uniform scaling. You access it by hitting this drop down over here. Oh, I accidentally deselected it there. And you see now we have three factors. We have the X factor, the Y factor, and the Z factor. And that just means uh, that you are stretching and resizing things along that direction only. You can see things are getting bigger, but not keeping the ratio between the three dimensions. Now, I don't find this tremendously useful for things like cubes because I can get something more precise using a press-pull tool that we'll talk a little bit about later on. Uh, but it is useful for uh, things like this. Let's uh, plunk down a sphere. If we want to make an egg out of this sphere, we can hit scale, go to non-uniform, and keep one of these the same and just stretch it along one axis. And uh, with curved objects like these, non-uniform scale is pretty neat for kind of warping them and stretching them around. So now it looks like a, an M&M &M of, of some kind. Um, so that's a, a time when non-uniform scale is useful for you. Uh, now this new tool that they've added, it might become my favorite way to scale an object. It's called Smart Scale. Um, and you just select something and you hit smart scale and you're gonna see first of all what's cool is it tells you how big the object is in any direction and you can click on these arrows and type in a whole new value and it will conform or you can grab any of these little points so you could grab this point over here to drag that corner out wherever you want it or you can drag just one of these and it's kind of like press pull only for the object in that entire direction. That I mean, that's going to work on the sphere as well. Uh, it doesn't have to be bound to a face. So you can see there, we can just drag this out like that. I think this completely replaces the original scale tool, but I'm sure they kept it in for people who were just used to uh, to using that old one. Um, so that is smart scale for you. All right. So, on to a completely cosmetic feature called materials. Now, as I mentioned before, material is the basically the skin that stretches out on top of the skeleton of this object, uh, and it changes the color and texture of your 3D model. Now, this can be useful when you have a bunch of things on the screen and you want to be able to differentiate what part is what. Uh, and what you got to do is basically you click on the object, and you click either down here on material or up here, either way, it's going to bring up this menu. And you can take this and rotate it around and change the color. And in here you can just adjust the brightness of that hue. And you can also give it a texture, like uh, natural wood or varnished wood or glossy metal or something like that. Um, this is not, if you're 3D printing, it's not going to affect your 3D printer uh, in the least. Uh, of course, the object of your, uh, the, the color of your object is going to be determined by the color of your filament, not the color of whatever skin you gave it in 1-2-3D design. But it's nice to have um, for visual differentiation anyway. All right, let's talk about measuring, because this is very important once you start working with, uh, with precision designs. Over here you have the measure tool. 
And the measure tool works in two different ways. By the way, you can you can drag it around using this. And also there's kind of like a hidden uh, part over here on this bottom right corner where you can just drag it out and give yourself a little bit more room. Now, there are two selection types for measuring. There is the face, edge, and vertex of a solid where you're measuring uh, using the subparts of the object. Or you can just measure the whole thing. Uh, now, measuring the whole thing is nice when you want basically a summary of its properties. So I can just... Give me, give me some information about this uh, cylinder. And I click it, and it tells me that the area of the cylinder is that gigantic number uh, millimeters squared, and its volume is that gigantic number millimeters cubed. Uh, and this one shows me uh, a little bit more, because it can make more out of the... Uh, oh, actually, this is talking about the distance between the cube and the cylinder. Uh, so if I just wanted to get a measurement of the cube, I have to clear my object first using the clear button, and then... That tells me the area and the volume. If I click two things, you can see it's telling me the distance as measured by this line. It's always going to pick the two closest possible points uh, between the objects and then tell me the area of the first one, the volume of the first one, the area of the second, and the volume of the second. Now I can also select, let me clear it out, I can also select faces, edges, and vertices. So let's say that I want to find out uh, what is the relationship between uh, this line segment and this line segment. It's going to let me know that the distance between them is 20, the angle between them is 0 because they're parallel, and the length of both is uh, 20 millimeters. I can clear it, and I can say, okay, what's the relationship between this vertex and, uh, let me see, can I select a solid, let's say this, this face. So I can measure from this particular corner over to the rim of this cylinder, and it tells me uh, the distance between them, the area, so if you want to measure areas, you want to be working in uh, face, edge, vertex selection mode, and then the length of this whole loop, so it's actually going to tell me the circumference of that diameter, so uh, explore the measure tool if you are into precision design. Now another new tool that you have available is uh, called the ruler tool, and uh, what that does is it measures the distance between the ruler origin and an object or a selection of objects, and this is how it works. You click on this ruler tool, and then you place the ruler where uh, you want to measure the distance from a point on the work grid or a point on a solid, um, like this. So let's say we want to measure the distance between the center point of this cylinder and the, uh, the origin distance is where that red circle is, and another object, like, say, a different cylinder. Let's put that down there, place our ruler once again over here. You place the ruler, and then you click on the object uh, that you're measuring the distance to. So we're going to click on this second cylinder, and you can see it gives you a whole ton of information, a whole lot of measurements both uh, the distance from the ruler to the ground, the distance uh, from the ruler's origin point to the borderline of this object over here, uh, the distance, the dimensions of the actual object you're measuring, and then also it gives you the ability to, um, to both, uh, let's see, can we rescale using that? We can rescale using that, so it's incorporated the Smart Scale feature into it. It's also incorporated the Move tool along the axes, where we can do this. See, now, uh, notice where it's measuring from. It's stopping at the very first point uh, that it's able to make contact with the cylinder at that face, uh, but using uh, this little gray... Uh, drop-down menu, we can also say, uh, tell it to measure it from the max distance. So you can see it's measuring uh, far back against the, uh, the object. Or let's see what happens when we measure it from the midpoint. You can see it's measuring also from the very midpoint of the object as well. Uh, so this is another way to move things around in a more precise manner. Again, I, I think, um, you know, between your measure tool and your move tool, you're pretty much set with these functions. Uh, but one of the things they're trying to do in this new edition is also to try to make the design process parallel uh, the other product uh, that Autodesk hosts, which is uh, Tinkercad. So if you're coming from Tinkercad, these new tools may make that transition for you easier. 
Another uh, fantastic tool that's been added in this new update is the Align tool, uh, which I think was also borrowed from Tinkercad. Uh, and the way the Align tool works is you want to have two objects uh, on, on your work grid, uh, ideally not already aligned with each other. You can see this one, the cylinder's all the way up top, and it's uh, not really sharing any other alignments uh, with the cube. Uh, you go over here to the Transform menu, and you hit Align. Then you uh, drag your selection box around the two objects that you want to select, and you see this grid pops up with these uh, strange little circle dots. Uh, and I'll show you what each of them do. Let's say we hit this one. What it's going to do is it's going to bring everything up to align the uh, the top part of the model with this sort of red kind of ghost ceiling that it's created. And you can see with each uh, with each alignment, if you hover your mouse over the dot, it's going to show you a little ghost version of uh, of what it's going to do. Uh, so let's say this bottom circle right here. If we press it, it's going to bring this cylinder down flush against the bottommost part of this solid. The cube is not going to move because it is already as far down toward that plane as it can be. But we need them both on the same plane. We hit this, and it brings it down. And we hit this uh, green checkbox uh, to confirm it. Or we can do this. Align. And we want to bring them both towards this sort of center average. You can see it aligns the shapes like that. We can align them using this one, and it brings them all toward the middle. Eventually, if you just keeping, keep hitting the middle dots, it'll eventually just make everything converge onto one point. Um, but that is a very useful tool for bringing objects in alignment with each other. Um, another example of this, I used to use the snap tool for this, uh, which we'll cover a little later, but let's say you have a, a, a big disk and you want to put a hole right through the middle of it. Let's take this cylinder and, I mean, let's just put it on here. Well, that's not going to work because it's way off center. So, we can take the Align tool, grab this, and as long as we don't use any of the ones that are going to align it along the Z-axis, we can put that small cylinder aligned with the center of the disk, so that later on when we get into like subtraction and things like that, uh, we can take this and we can, uh, oh, let's try Smart Scaling for this one. Uh, let's grab that, drill it through like that, and use our subtract tool to cut a hole right through the center of the disk. And we know it's right in the center uh, because we use the align tool. Now, if I went a little fast there, you don't know how subtract works, don't worry about it. It's the next thing we're going to cover in the uh, following video. We're going to deal with uh, Boolean unions, merge, subtract, intersect, as well as grouping and some other ways that uh, solid objects interact with each other. So I will see you in the next video.